So from a stretch, that's next from the rolling. We looked at that earlier. Okay, He's squeezing the glutes, staying tall, make sure that they're not overextending the low back. Um, this is a good one. So uh, mobilizing the posterior hip. Is there anyone that hasn't seen this before? So it, so it's essentially you're going in this position. Okay. Who who hasn't seen this? Okay. Okay. So essentially, um, it goes from. Th so there's a bit of a circuit. I mean, doing a circuit for a little mobility, but I like going from there. To here and you'll feel the stretch when you move laterally couple key points try and stay vertical as possible to start with the thigh make sure that um, the the pelvis is flat it's not opening up if you need more of a stretch you can close in just a little bit okay and you go to the side after they've gone to the side a few times um, you can ask them to just grind it out when they're on the out outside and usually the way I'll describe it is like a semicircle as if they were a you know lonely Friday night cleaning the rest of the ice cream out of, out of the out of the tub just grinding out the last little bit um, <laughs> yeah so so you go side to side then you clean it up okay after you do that you'll go into a 45 degree position and you'll now s sit back again making sure that the the butt's not tucking underneath and from here, you can still clean the ice cream out. And then, yeah, so, that, so that's the 45 degrees up to the side. Obviously, you can't see her. She's not moving. It's a still picture. Um, and then, so from here to here, I'll take it to here and add a little bit of a groin. Okay? So key things here, I like to make sure that the shin is vertical for this. Spine is relatively neutral. Okay, they're not tucking in because otherwise, if they're tucking in, they're not really getting much of a stretch in the hip. And then I can do anything from turn the femur out, or what I call closing the book. So moving the pelvis on the femur. Okay. Um, here's good too. Like you can actually get some ankle dorsiflexion mobilization too. So it's your you're, you're, you're killing multiple birds with one stone. Um, so again, from here to grinding it out to here to grinding it out, now up to here and doing the same thing. Frogs are good. Her feet are actually too close together. Um, but this just stretches out the hip or mobilizes the hip in general. It's pretty intense. I mean, we did it a couple weeks ago. Um, who wants to do this one? I think we should show it. Anyone? Have you guys all seen this? You guys are okay with it? So we don't have to go over it? So let's go on all fours. So you're going to start with your knees um, at a good distance apart. Okay. Come on your elbows. Sit back, keeping you neutral. Okay. So you loosen that up first. Now go a little bit wider. So you're just going to rock back and forth a little bit. You side can, to side? No, forward and back. Nice and easy. Get the feet out a little bit more. Yeah, good. Do you feel a stretch at all? There I do. Okay. So then you go wider. So back and forth. Okay, from here, you can also add, come forward all the way into your stomach, or as close as you can, that you can tolerate, and you can internally rotate one foot, so lift one foot in the air, and come back, and sit back, come forward, the other foot, come back, and eventually, you know, go wider and wider and wider. Okay, as much as you can tolerate. Paying attention to breathing, control, relaxation as much as possible. 
you can sit here for 20 minutes and get a good shred, right? Um, I just wouldn't do anything explosive right away, right after. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, but I've turned that. So essentially, Sean's asking me if I do this one. I think I got this from Nick Tumanello. Um, he does that. But for the population that I see, that they always tuck in too much. So that's why I just kept it out to here. Right? Um, it depends on the person again. Um, and, and even with this, this groin hip stretch, I mean, everybody might have their own individual variations. I could have been butchering it. Right? But it depends on what they're feeling. So you're constantly communicating. Right? The, you know, do you feel that there? How, how is it? Are you okay? Oh, okay. you know, the, the person might say, oh, I don't really feel it. So, okay, let's modify this a little bit. Yeah, it depends for sure. Yeah. Yeah. You mean when you keep it out? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I, you know, like I said, I think I've I found that you know it's it's harder to get into when your foot's kind of right behind the knee. I think just as a society, we're just so restricted. That I just kept it wider. I mean, some people will, will definitely need that for sure. So just depends. So when yeah. I start with it, because when I, when I first started doing that stretch, when I saw Nick do it, it was an easy way to just kind of like get that thing in at the starting point. Yeah, really yeah, for sure. It's, a, it's got like a frame of reference. Um, and again, just making sure that the spine is neutral and so forth. Um, again, we talked about the goblet earlier. Um, so this is where you're stretching under load. Because sometimes you can stretch stretch the heck out of something, and it just keeps coming back. Then, then as soon as you put it under load, where the body actually has to adapt, then it's like boom, it'll open up, right? So you know, as long as you're doing the right thing, right? Granted, you could be stretching something that's just a protective mechanism. Of course, it's going to keep coming back. But if you think you're bang on, then I should be here, and you're still not getting it. Like, I used to be, again, going back to that guy, I used to be that guy that would irritate the heck out of something. It will keep coming back. And as soon as I did something else, you know, with a kettlebell or a weight or, or whatever, and it just opened up, and, and the body said, okay, okay, you want me to adapt? Now I'll adapt, for sure. Versus I want to feel good with that soft tissue work, so I'll just keep coming back, right? Um, so again, it's, you know, you're prying your hips open, you're rocking back and forth, keeping a neutral spine. Right, as best as possible, keeping a smile on your face. Right, um, you know, I would have liked her to do it without sneakers on, but sometimes people need it to start. Can you go bottom up, kettlebell? That's how it's taught. Yeah, the dumbbell's good too, though. Yeah, for sure. I think they, they they each have their benefits. I would say that I'm more comfortable in a dumbbell um, doing it, but. Um, but it, I think the challenge is good, though. I think challenge is good. Well, with, with, with the, when you're holding onto the horns, you're pulling out, right? So that's getting you to engage your lats. You're pulling out and down. With a dumbbell, I say I'm more comfortable because it's easier, right? Yeah, so yeah, you're definitely put, you're only going knees to elbows to knees, right? But with the horns, you can pull out against each other. Dumbbell, you know, I'm not, I don't have to work as hard. So that's why I said I'm more comfortable. Again, I could be wrong. I don't know. You guys, you guys spend more time in the gym than I do. So, you know, tell me what works. Um, again, rolling erectors. I kind of have a two-part thing where I, I go broad, right, just up the erectors, and then I, th and then I'll go intersegmental. Okay, where um, let's get a foam roller real quick, because I want to go over this one. Please. What's that? I don't, I don't so intersegmental meaning vertebrae to vertebrae to vertebrae to vertebrae. Does that make sense? Yeah. So with every segment? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So again, like I, again, I'm sweating the small stuff because I think, you know, there are certain things that we just glance over and, and, and miss things. And it can have a profound impact. I think, anyway. I thought the one pair of 
It's what? Street Cairo? But, you know, having said that, if there's one spot that I'm less concerned about for the rest of the body, we need as much mobility. Tony said this earlier. We need as much mobility as we can in the thoracic spine, right? So, like, what? I'm sure, if, like, someone gets pops on their own and, you know, without paying me, fine. Right? Um, yeah. So, can I borrow someone? John. So again, everyone has their way. This is how I'll, 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 I'll use it in, in, with the people I work with. So hands behind your head. And I'll start off with, so hang on a second. Roll up just a little bit uh, the other way. Stop right there. I think for a lot of people, it's too painful to begin with, at least in the low, in the low back. So I usually stay away from it. Uh, if I do go into the low back, I'll, I'll just have them sit there and more on an angle to one side versus the other. Um, but from a thoracic standpoint, I'll start, you know, maybe T8, so lower than the scapula. Um, come up just a tad right there, hands behind your back or your head, feet closer together. Uh, not too far, sorry. Um, right here, closer to your butt. So and I'll lift up your butt and slide from here to here. Roll back and forth, nice and easy. So here, I don't mind going broad. If you want to get specific, then you'll go, you know, do, do two inch, one inch. So this is easy. Everyone does this, okay? As long as they're relaxed, even at the neck too, okay? Because if they're tight and they're pulling, then it's a different story. Um, now from here, after I've gone and kind of scanned everything, I'll get him to arch back using this at the pivot point, okay? This is common, what he's doing right now, but I think we can get even more specific. Right, so I'll cue him to just keep this down here and just use the roller as a pivot point. Once you get out there, breathe into your stomach. So come back out there, sorry. Breathe into your stomach, exhale, and come back up. Go again, nice and easy, stomach, rib cage down, breathe into your stomach. Exhale, come back up. After he's done about three, then I'll have him go into the next segment. So scoot down just one inch and do the same thing. So I, you know, to start, I'll teach them how to do it. Then they're on their own. If I still see them popping up at the rib cage, then you know that the extension is coming from the TL junction. They're not really getting that intersegmental at the spine. Okay, does that make sense? Again, I'm sweating the small stuff, but I think it's important. Okay. Thanks. Um, and then so mobility or stretching, you've got thoracic extension. Make sure that they're not getting in the low back, okay, because it's easy to get in the low back. Um, knee, knees go as wide as they need to, act, to actually make sure that the low back stays neutral. But again, if they're extending in the low back, you got to correct it. Sometimes you might need to hit the lats first, okay, because if that's stiff. Or if they have a shoulder problem, you might need to go to this one, right? Again, Tony talked about this earlier. Um, and sometimes it's just fine tuning. Even in this position, people who have shoulder problems, um, you know, will say, no, that pinch is there. Okay, well, externally we to rotate the shoulders a little bit more. So bring the elbows in. That might be better, okay? Because it just clears up that, that uh, GH joint. Make sense? But, or if that doesn't work, you know, just lay the hands out, go wide fine-tune, right? Just because there's, um, you know, impingement-type symptoms in one spot doesn't mean that you have to just scrap that completely. Just, you know, build up your arsenal, build up the toolbox, build up progressions, regressions, and find out. Um, you guys are familiar with the Bretzel? Okay, so we've got a couple that aren't. Okay, so just a mobility drill um, for the thoracic spine. Someone's got a low back problem, be careful with this. As much as you're locking up the low back, if you've got a low back problem, be careful with this. Um, can I, you haven't done it, right? So come, do you mind coming up? Okay, so we'll get you on your side, actually facing, facing the wall, please. 
and put your head on this because I so I come forward more a little more just so we can get the camera on it so I would like to make sure again you, you want everything being meticulous you want everything in line so maybe the roller might be a little too high okay but for demonstration purposes I want to make sure that that C spine's in line with the rest of the spine start off with start lay on your right shoulder right bang on it okay on your right hip okay straighten out a little bit perfect now straighten this leg out uh, keep it straight for a second here okay let's bring that here tuck this underneath your thigh uh, in, underneath here yeah good okay so again you're still making sure that they're in line as possible grab this hold that down can you grab your ankle with your left hand or your foot. Okay, good. So again, someone's got a low back problem, be careful with it. How high can you bring this up here? So again, we want to lock out that that this region here so that the, the rotation happens only in the thoracic spine. I'll get you to breathe in. As you exhale, pull the shoulder blade back. You're trying to rotate from here. Okay, good. Breathe in. Exhale and rotate back. Perfect. So he's looking up too. You want you want the eyes to lead. Breathe in. Exhale. If someone's quad stiff, you're gonna ask them to contract this as well. Good. Breathe in. Exhale. So after you've done a few, again, you're making you're being mindful of re, you know you're trying to relax as you're doing this. Come back out of it, and then you go again, trying to go further the next time. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. So there's Bressel 2.0, I won't go into that. That's just stretching in a different way. More of an upright position. So I would say that, you know, if you're learning, I mean, truthfully, I got this from the internet, right? But at the same time, if you're learning stuff from the internet, you gotta have a filter on, right? So try, to, try and go to the source. Um, now you want to load it up a little bit more for the thoracic spine to get it to open up. So I like these ones. Again, with the low back, make sure that they're kind of clean and you, you don't want to... They have to clear this first, okay? So someone has to be... You have to make sure that the patient or the client is appropriate for this exercise. But I think it really opens up um, the thor thoracoscapulo humeral joint complex okay um, so essentially you're swinging the legs not swinging it but you're moving it to one side opening up and back and forth and going to the other side all right um, anyone not see this okay so so we don't necessarily have to go go over it just make sure when you're doing this you're not cranking out the low back again make sure it's appropriate for the person you're working with Rotation should happen here. The cues that I give is just keep that shoulder blade down as possible on the ground. I say be a bobblehead, so relax that neck. Okay, make sure it's nice and loose because once you get into the stretched position, that you know it's easy to tense up. Um, so be a bobblehead. The side you're rotating towards is the palm down. Side, side you're rotating away from is palm up. Okay, um, so. You know, again, spine aside or, or low back aside, someone's got stiffness and tightness in the neck, and they said that, yeah, my therapist has been massaging it, releasing it, and it just keeps coming back. Well, no guff. It's, it's being constantly tense. As soon as you open back up here, it's relaxed, right? Then, then they don't feel that tension or the headaches or, or whatever. So it's like, you know, figure it out. I like this to try and improve um, mobility in that same region, okay, arm bars. Um, again, make sure that the, the person you're working with is, is compatible with this exercise. Um, keys here, you know, bobblehead, shoulder isn't hiking, okay, it's still relatively packed. You're trying to separate that rib cage from the, from the scapula, trying to rotate from the thoracic spine here. Um, that's wrong, okay? So I'm gonna give her heck on Monday. Um, so yeah. 
has everybody tried an armbar version before? Okay. This is money. The crooked armbar. You guys tried that one? Like it's again, being that guy released the the serratus and the subscap, but it just keeps coming back. You load it up, the body's like, okay, now, whoa. Now it's opened up and, 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 and it's less likely to come back. So essentially, you're in the armbar position. You'd probably un, unwind your, your torso a little bit and you're just pulling the elbow into the back pocket. Okay? So maybe if, if anyone wants to go over that afterwards, we can go out over that. Make sure that they don't go you know, into, they don't glide anteriorly, okay, because that's going to hurt the heck out of their bicep tendon, uh, their long head bicep. So make sure that they're, they're retracted the entire time, and then, again, be a bobblehead. Um, we talked about these. So, you know, I forgot the field goal, but um, definitely use these a lot. Um, one thing I would say, you know, make sure that rib cage stays down. Two things, make sure the rib cage stays down and make sure that they have full control of the breath. So usually what works for me is slide up, keeping the rib cage down. As soon as they first feel that point, they feel that first point of tension, get a nice diaphragmatic breath cycle in, in, out, release. Come back up, in, out, release, and so forth, okay? Now if that gets too easy, and you're paying attention, you're not just doing it, right? You know, this should be flat. The elbow should be staying down. We're not just doing it haphazardly. So you're kind of paying attention to all the different parts of the body. Um, if that's too easy, you go into a seated position, right? So same thing. Uh, I like tucking the knees as far as possible to, to really try and tension them up and, 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 and get them to control the breath. Um, again, if they've got a low back problem, you might not want to do that. So, or if they, if they feel pinching here, then we got to figure that out too. 